Hey everyone, welcome back to James' Repair Shop. Working on the uh, 65 uh, Thunderbird hardtop. Uh, I've got those window seals that I bought at that car show. If you'd watched that, you'll know I went and saw Alan at the car show and picked up a set of window seals. And uh, I thought, well, since I had the back quarter window out, or the panels off the back quarter, I would uh, show how to put these in. It's very simple. Um, not a lot of instruction on it um, in the Ford manual. Uh, it shows that you just, it just shows them in place and where it goes. Um, it doesn't say to put adhesive on or not, but I tried these ones, and I'm going to show you in a second. But I tried them as a just kind of a dry fit, and the the piece that runs down the sail, like this section, well, where right here, this section right here, it's a little too short. Now these are Dennis Carpenter uh, window seals, but they stretch easily. They're very supple, soft. So I am under the impression that you need to just tug it along. But uh, I think what I'm going to do in my case, uh, I'll put some adhesive at the bottom and at the upper corner in here to hold them in place so they don't shrink back. I'll show you when we get in there, but first I'll set up and we'll, uh, I'll, we'll go through uh, these gaskets. I'll get you the part number and everything and we'll take a peek at them. So here we are. These are the gaskets and uh, this is the part number for this hard top. Uh, but if you had, have the Landau that goes straight down here, they're a different gasket. And that's why I ended up getting these because the Allen he ordered them and he ordered the wrong ones. So there's one, that's the, the uh, passenger side. And you can tell the side of them on how this gasket goes. So there's a little end on it. And this is the forward part. And this little piece goes inward. So that's on the passenger side. I've got the uh, driver's side laid out here. And there's the little piece there. I uh, measured down inside the ch window channel a little bit. You can see I put a little yellow mark. Now let's go in here for a second. I don't have a light on in here just yet, but I will get one on. And you'll see that some of this uh, gasket goes down in the, into the, uh, in behind the, the quarter window. So since I had this all apart, I thought this is a good chance to put it on. And you can see how far it comes. I'm quite sure, and I'm going to try it on the other side, because the other side hasn't been taken apart. I'm going to try to do this without taking the, the, the uh, interior trims off. But I wanted to try it this way first, just kind of get a feel for what's going on. So what I was talking about, uh, this from here down to here, with the new one, it's too short. It only comes to about here. But it's very pliable, and it appears like you can... Uh, uh, fasten it up in there and stretch it or fasten it down there and stretch it up to there. It seems like the rest of it all the way around is in good, uh, it seems to fit nicely. It's just this little piece and it may have only been uh, shrunk back in the production. But they're very soft, um, like it's a very soft material. Nice, really actually feels really good. It feels what the, new, the old ones would have felt like. So what I'm going to use uh, is a little bit of this LePage um, con heavy duty contact cement and I'm only going to put on a little bit of it just uh, about three inches two or three inches not much and I think what I'm going to do I'm going to do this corner up here too now if you're using this stuff it's it's contact cement for a reason as soon as you make contact it's going to stick to it so if it's cured properly and then I'll go from there so let's see, uh, see how that goes but first I'm going to get all this old one out and it's not hard to get out. It comes right out and there's no sign or at least what a part that I have removed already. There's no sign of it ever having any uh, contact cement on it or any adhesive rather. Now when you get down in here and there's that piece I was talking about that uh, little uh, wider section. There's actually a screw in there. So there's a screw right there and that's the only bit of hardware in this that I am aware of. I looked at my uh, body, uh, body installation manual and they don't show any screws other than that one right there. Now on the new gasket, they show, a, there's a, no it's not. I thought there was a screw hole in it. Nope, there isn't. I thought they put one in, but they didn't. 
But anyway, uh, that's good. Uh, so that's what we're, that's the plan. So let's get on it. We'll pull this one out. All right. So here's this screw, and there is a little metal piece in there too. Um, I'll have to look at that. Maybe that has to go back in as well. It's not on the new piece. So let's pull this out and have a look. I'm doing this and holding the camera at the same time. So bear with me a bit. I'll take this off. There we go. Pretty easy. Come right out. Set down. Now, what is this little metal clip? There is. There's a little, like a little metal. Yeah, so that'll have to go back on right there. Sorry, I get you way out of whack. So that's all it is, and that would just go over top of the of the uh, new piece. So I'll set those down the side, and I think this is going to come out pretty easy. I'm going to have to clean up this window channel, of course. Oh, these are brittle. <laughs> But yeah, it'll all need to be cleaned up. Someone tried to patch it up there at one point. But so far, what I see on this job here, it's pretty easy. This is real time, so you see how quickly it goes. And these are old, so if yours aren't quite as bad as that, they'll come out easily. Now, like I said, I marked the, that yellow mark, and I'll slide it up out of there. And that's how I'll measure that and I'll put the adhesive on that little bit. It doesn't appear to be anything else on this. It looks pretty straightforward. All right, so I'll just uh, clean that track up off camera and we'll put a little glue on it. So I just laid the old gasket outside of the new gasket, kind of giving an idea of what I'm talking about with it's not long enough, but I'm pretty sure, I, don't, I can't do it with one hand, but I can stretch that out. But it's definitely going to need to be held in place because that's quite a bit of stretch. But uh, let's see if we can do it with one hand here. No. All right, well, this is the time to see if we can stretch it enough. So there it is. It's up into the notch of the other one. And it, like I said, it, it, it'll stretch to get down in there, but it's going to have to be held. I'm pretty sure it'll have to be held at the top and at the bottom. All right, so that's what we'll do. We'll put some uh, adhesive contact cement there and up in that top corner. All right, so I'm just cleaning up the window track here. I'm using this spray away glass cleaner, just cleaning up the track some, uh, wiping it out, pretty much like that. Pretty straightforward. And I'm going through also with this uh, trim tool just to make sure that there's no old bits and pieces left in. I did find one, so it's good to go through it and just check it. So that's it, so I'll continue on with that. So I've got the, uh, the window channel all cleaned up, and Beverly came out and she wanted to go out and sit on the deck and have a drink. It's 32 degrees here, so I said, why not? I'm up for a drink on the deck. So anyway, I, we went out and while I was out there, I was thinking about these window gaskets and how come they're short. So I ran it by her and she had some ideas, but I'm going to show you what I think happened here. Uh, I think these gaskets were made properly. Um, I bought these gaskets secondhand from Alan. Uh, you saw them on that uh, Warman Home Center car show. And uh, Alan was telling me at the time that he had taken these gaskets to uh, someone to have them installed and uh, then the guy calls and said they don't fit and that's all he thought about it and he put them up for sale and he went and ordered their proper ones. Now his car is actually a Landau. It doesn't have the, the quarter window. So I'm going to show you what I think happened there and I'm not, this is nothing Alan or you know the former owner of these gaskets did intentionally. This guy is honest. I know I've, I've talked to this guy before. I, I know him a little bit, and I know he's an honest guy. So I think what happened was that the gaskets may have been cut. And I'll show you why I think that. So let's take a, a zoom in. But it's not a big deal in, in this project because I can make it work just the same. It'll look just as fine. It'll be good. So you work with what you have sometimes. And, uh, I mean, I got these gaskets for a third of what they cost uh, to buy them new. So I'm still pretty pretty happy that I was able to get a set of gas window gaskets for the price I got them at. So anyway, I'll, I'll bring you in and I'll show you uh, what I think happened. So what I think happened here was that uh, when he took those gaskets in and the, and the person that was putting them on, because the Landau goes straight down to the, to the edge of the, to the door gap like that, I think what happened was that 
if I bring this out, when the person went to put them on, they, because they're the wrong gasket, they thought, oh, they're just too long. And they trimmed them to fit down in the, in the door channel, the window channel of the Landau. But then it would be wrong up here because the Landau has a, more of a curve to it. So then they realized it wasn't going to fit, but they'd already cut the gasket off. So I, I, I completely understand what they were doing there. Uh, if that was the case, and I'm pretty sure it is, because it's it lines up well for what you would have for a Landau like that. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this back out. By the way, I had it in and it fits perfectly everywhere else, pretty much perfectly. So these are a good gasket as far as I can see. But what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you up here, <clears throat> is that we're about just roughly about this much too short. Now, like I showed you earlier, I could stretch them, but I'm thinking that doesn't seem right. And that's why I'm at doing it this way. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna trim this off right flush square. And then I'm gonna go up here because there's a section up here that's, that's soft and really in nice shape still. Hasn't been uh, tore up or anything. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this section out here and I'm gonna glue it with the uh, contact cement on the end of there and put it in. And uh, it comes to, I think we saw it comes about there, the gasket. So it'll just be that little bit left going down in and it'll be perfectly fine. And I think they cut both sides. Not the end of the world, you work for what you have and we're gonna make it work. So I'm gonna go trim this off square, get some of the um, contact cement on them, get them glued together. I think when I'm putting it, while I have the contact cement out, I think I'm gonna put a little bit up in here just just to be sure. And other than that, I don't think up in here, I'm gonna leave this for now. If this is giving me problems right here, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take it down and put some contact cement in it. But when I had it in there, just dry fitting, it was fine. And even up in here was good dry fitting. It, it fit nice, so, but I think I'll just put a dab on just to hold it. So let's get this cut flush. I'll lay it flat. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit off, keeping it, this is a brand new knife blade. Just get it trimmed off. Just like so, good. So that's good and flush. Now I'll cut the, uh, the donor piece, we'll call it. This is a really nice section right here. So I'm just gonna cut it off flush as well. Oh, there's something in that. There's wire in there. Ha ha ha. Now, I don't think the, the new one has wire in it. That's interesting. How much wire is in that? I can feel it all along there. So there is a wire support inside of that. Anyway, I'll cut this off and I'll get the wire out. So there is a difference right there. Stuff you learn, right? There's a wire in that, so I'll get rid of this old piece. Now I'm going to cut down a ways and see where that wire goes. A wire, I didn't know idea. Yeah, goes right down. So yeah, the old ones had wire reinforcing in them. I'm going to snip that off and uh, it'll be glued on just like that. It'll be fine. I got my glue brush. I got my contact cement here stirred up. I'm going to put a little dab on it. Now these look like a different profile. These two together. This is the old piece obviously with the wire was in it. But the difference is that this lip has been folded. So I'm going to try to hold it up when I glue it together like sort of like that. The rest of that is pretty bang on to what the uh, original was, so I think it's going to be a decent fit. At least it down, hidden away almost to the bottom. So let's get a little glue on each end of these and uh, we'll go from there. So this, this stuff here, like I say, it's contact cement if you haven't used it. Pretty quick and simple. Most people have used contact cement, either doing a countertop or any other kind of work, is that you put some on each piece 
and then you let it dry for a little bit until it no longer is, feels wet. And I'm going to put a little bit up on the top here. You won't see me, but I'm going to do a little bit up high and I'll go over to the car and put some on. Let's just see if we can get this in place. I wanted to bring this piece up a little bit to match that. And that should do it. I'll hold it a little bit, make sure it stays. There. It's not staying very well there, but that's okay. We're doing a repair job. Like I said, you work with what you have sometimes, and that's all you have, that's all you have. It's not really holding that very well. No, it's not sticking to that stuff. Huh. Okay, well, the uh, contact cement doesn't seem to fit or to stick very well to this uh, neoprene stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try it with a shot of uh, Super 77 adhesive. You've seen me use this stuff before, 3M Super 77. So let's see how it works with that stuff. Oops, get around here. Hopefully this will work better. It's the same deal. It has to, you put it on each side and, the, and then you have to let it dry. So let's see how it goes. Hopefully it sticks. If not, I'll, sh I'll figure something out. We, like I said, we always manage to get it done one way or another. Okay, let's try this one. See if it works. If not, we're down to crazy glue. <laughs> Let that kind of marry together in there. So hopefully this will hold it all. All right, I'll report back to what I find. Well, the Super 77 won't stick to it either. It just keeps pulling away. Huh. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to go get some super glue. Yeah, Super 77 won't even stick to the neoprene. Hmm, interesting. I thought for sure that those two products would be perfect for this. All right, next step is super glue. So I've got some Gorilla Super Glue gel. Let's see if that works on this stuff. So far, we're not having much luck, are we? So. Little nub out of there. And hopefully yeah, there's some in there. There it comes. There. All right, let's see if that works. Oh, I think we have it this time. All right, so super glue is the answer. I'm not going to yank on it like crazy because I just need it to go in and hold it. A pretty good little bit of tug on it. So if you're going to do this job, <clears throat> get yourself some super glue. If you happen to have to cut them like I did, not cut them, but have to splice them together. So like I said, we make it work one way or another. That seems to be very solid right there now. All right, so I'm going to go put it on the car. So I did put a little bit of the contact cement up here, so uh, we'll see how well it bites on. Oh, 
If it's as good as the other, it won't be very good at all. All right, I'll just put this up over the top for now. Hold it up there, something on it. Maybe we can get some light on this. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. No, everything's gonna shine in your eyes. So anyway, let's get ahead, go ahead and uh, put this in. <clears throat> All right, hopefully you guys can still see it. So what I'm doing is there's an inner and outer lip. So I've got this up right in the corner and the inner lip is inside the uh, channel. So what I'm doing is just putting the uh, inside piece in first. So this is the this is the channel right here. So I want to get this down though inside before I get too crazy with it to make sure it's going to fit. Oh yeah, that'll be good. It may be a little long now. Before it was too short. Maybe it's a little too long now. But this is all it does, it just clips in. As long as you get the inside channel in, in here it's very simple. That's why I think on the other side you could easily do it uh, in the car without taking the trim off the car. I think you could do it. You'd have to get a little bit of a tool down in there because it, it goes way down and behind. That might be difficult. I guess we'll know. And that's it. That piece is in, look at that. That part of it, yeah. So that was easy. It's the same all the way around now. So let's go over and do a little bit more. I found the, uh, when I was dry fitting it, the, the piece up here, if you can see it at the very front where it goes down to the door jam again was harder to get in uh, this this was easy this part here again just make sure you get the back piece in and you can just work the front end along like so I'll have to get light on it. This was tight right here, very tight to get in around this piece. Where's my little tool right here? A little plastic tool. And you don't want to use a, a metal screwdriver on this because you'll pull, you'll rip that neoprene. So you just use a plastic tool or something like that. But don't go at it with something sharp, metal wise. I think you can see me still. Oh yeah, you can still see it. So it's going pretty good. All right, I'll just keep going. Make sure it's in the back as you go. It kind of just falls into place, really. Now, you don't want to be pulling down on it because it'll be too long then, right? So you want it to line up with that hole down there to where it needs to be. So don't, don't be pulling down on it. If anything, hold up a tiny bit because you can always snug it back down later. There we are. So up in here, I just want to explain, like there's a section right about from here to here that there's no window, there's no channel on the outside. It's, it relies on this uh, piece of trim right here to go in behind. So on this car anyway, I don't know, maybe there's somebody taking it out, but I doubt it. This seemed like the original original uh, window gasket to me. There it goes. Get in there, you. It doesn't take much effort. This is, like I said, this is very simple to do. I think anybody could, just about anybody, it's like it would be on a skill level of, of one to 10, probably about a three for this one. Maybe less than that, two to three. Uh, this might have been three because I had to glue a piece on. <laughs> if you had the right ones, uh, the ones that had never been cut, or assuming they have these were cut, it would be a two for this job from one to ten. So don't be afraid to try it. Well, I should say that because if you have to take this panel off, it puts the skill level up a little higher. So anyway, use your own judgment. 
For me, it's a two. And remember, like I was just pulling down on the stuff, don't pull down on it. Just kind of neutral pressure. There we go. In there. This is going to be a little tighter. So far, this has actually been the hardest part to work with. Just keep tucking it in. It'll go. There, look at that. That's in. Yeah. I'll just go back in here, make sure the back is all in so you can pull it ahead and just make a, a peek in there, make sure it's all in place. Move my light so I can see if it's all up in place. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. You run your, your tool along just gently, don't gouge it in. <laughs> There. Now, how close is this to being accurate? I don't know. This uh, rubber where the screw hole goes in. It seems like it might be a little bit long. I know I didn't pull it. So. That might just be a shade long. All right. Let's see, yeah, that hole is is way up in here, so I think that's where I'm gonna. I'll see if I can pull it back some, but it's not. There's no place for it to go, so. I, can, I think I can get push it up in place. All right, let's see what we can do with that. You guys can still see me. Oh, it goes way up in there. I think I'm not going to use that hole that they gave me. I'm going to put it up in here. I'm going to make a new hole. That's too high. Right about here, I think. Yeah. All that stuff is tough down in there. There we go. I'm reaching over extending my arms because I can't show you guys how to do this at the same time. You're eating my way here. <laughs> Where are you? You little bugger. There we are. Look at that. Oh. Move this maybe a little bit. There she goes. Let's see how that goes in there. Oh, popped out again. There she goes. All right. Let's see how that fits in the with the door. Oh, knees aren't good. All right. Let's see how it uh, how the door closes. That's going to be fine. Look at that. Fits up in there. Good and tight around the window. Now I'm gonna put the, I'll hook the battery up and I'll run the window up. So give me a second. All right, back window first. Perfect. Oh, not that one. Front, front left window. That's good. 
That's good, that's good. It's a little tight, but I think it'll work in. It's a little tight right on this spot right in here. Yeah. But it's sealed, there's no light coming through. No light back here. Perfect. I'm gonna call that a win. Let's see if the door will open and close. Oh yeah, that's tightened that up a lot. All right. Okay, so that one's done, this side. I'm gonna leave the back window up to hold it in place. And I'm gonna leave the front window up to hold it in place. I'll shut the key off here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is go over to the other side and see if we can do the other side, at least do the start of it. And to see to know whether you have to take the panel off or not. Because if you can do this job without taking the panel off, that's gravy. That's 100%. All right, so let's go over and do that. See if we can do it without taking the inner panels off. That'd be great if you can. So I've got my tool here. Where's my little uh, plastic tool? And all I'm going to do is pull this section out up to up just out of the way. And then I'll take the new piece. Of, and uh, I know I have to put glue a piece on already. But I'll take the new piece and shove it down to see if it can be done. So let's see if we can get this out first. And these come out easy like that, like, you know. So this is with the panel in. I think you can. It may be a little bit fiddly, but it's a heck of a lot better than taking all the panels off, right? And we've got lots of good uh, uh, gasket here to work with. This one's actually not in terrible shape, but I'm replacing them, so I may as well do both of them. No, this one's actually pretty good. Almost tempted to leave it. It's in really good shape, but you know what? I'm gonna get take it out because do it now. I, what am I gonna do with the other one gasket? Nothing. All right, so that one is up out of the way. Now, can we do this in the car? So let's put that up out of the way. So this is the piece that would go up in here. So I thinking um, if a fall just started it in like that and then shoved it down, I think you could do it in the car. Yep, just as simple as that. Let's, now again, we I gotta I have to glue a piece on this, but look how simple that was. That was easy. Yeah, it's not all the way in there, so now I'm bragging about how easy it is. But you just gotta make sure you get it in there. Just make sure you get it in. So I think if you I clean this up a little bit. So if you started it up in here and got it started like so, and then you know you're in the track, you could slide it down and crimp it in. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that that'll go easy. You don't have to take the trim off to do that. All right. Just make sure if you're doing it in without taking the trim off, make sure that the back lip is on inside the channel. And this one it is, so you'll feel it. It actually, it's funny, you'll feel it go right in, just like that. So that's it. So you don't have to take all the interior out to do it. I had that side off already, that's why I'm doing it this way. But uh, it can be done, and actually quite easily. But there you go. Easy job, uh, from a scale from one to 10, that's a number two for a skill set for this job. You don't have to take the panels out, you can slip those in. Uh, make sure that uh, when you're buying these gaskets that you know what you have. If you have a sail window, you need the hardtop ones. If you have a Landau, you need the Landau ones. And if it's convertible, well, that's a whole different ball game and you won't get them confused. But make sure you buy the right ones. If you get them and they, and they um, are like mine and they are short, um, I am assuming these have been cut and that's only an assumption that they've been cut. Um, but it sure looks that way. Um, but if you happen to get them and they are short like that, well, I showed you what to do, but don't try, don't bother with uh, contact cement, don't bother with the uh, Super 77 or anything like that. Just go get the super glue. Uh, I use the super glue, uh, Gorilla Glue super glue uh, gel, works well. As you've seen, it went on, good bond. So now I'm torn to cut up this old gasket. I don't really want to. So I think I'm gonna to try to find a good piece on the other old gasket and I'll save this for a just in case situation. Cause you know, that's how you accumulate junk. Cause you save these just in case 
uh, pieces. <laughs> but anyway, for now, uh, I'm gonna just continue on with installing this gasket. Well, I'll glue this one up, get the old one out, glue her all back together. And uh, just remember, buy the hard top with the sail window or the Landau. And if you get that right, the rest is easy. Anyway, so everyone, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I really appreciate the uh, new subscribers that are here. So be one of those new subscribers and hit that subscribe button. Anyway, thanks a lot, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.